Hello, everyone. Um, before this podcast even begins, I uh, I would like to warn you that it's going to be really rough ahead. It's just going to be really content heavy and very complicated and disgusting at some point. So I would like you to go into our description box below and download the PowerPoint that we made with our own blood, sweat and tears and also the extra resource that will also help you. And finally, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, please head over to our YouTube channel to view these resources. Thank you. Fine, like K-pop stands are so nice in my in oh, my opinion. Yeah. Like, like in real yeah. life, like the concert. Do you know what it was? So I saw Ariana Grande live as well, and I found like those the people that attended her concert were like really judgmental. I hated the whole experience. But the K-pop stands, it's like you're all weird enough for being here in the first place, and so no one can judge. So you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, like it was just so good. I really recommend it. it was just I've so made good. so many friends through K-pop. Like half literally. my friends are K-pop stands. <laughs> I li- I used to be on the Twitter until I got suspended, and then. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of Catchy? Oh my god, Catchy. It's catchy. <laughs> No, Kachi? It's so cringe. They're from the UK. It was the, the stats. They called the stats Kuchis. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Hello, world. We are Science Pod. Guys, we're <laughs> not in sync. Hello, world. We are Science Pod. Providing you with the necessary knowledge and wisdom to succeed in the sciences. Warning, this podcast may contain vulgar language and is not suitable for children, but for people who are wishing to get that A star. We're not professionals, but we will try our best to teach our audience about the wonders of science. This is dedicated to students by students. So sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy the podcast. All right, so for today's episode, we are going to be talking about photosynthesis. So Ooh. I'll give it over to Ali and Sam, the experts for today. Come on, we need some really hype. To this. <laughs> 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 I okay. guess we're experts because we finished our A level biology course. Wow. Wow. Oh, cringe. Like okay. somehow. <laughs> okay. So, yes. Welcome to photosynthesis. This is a plant. What makes us different from a plant? Answer. Okay, um, what makes us different from a plant? Yeah, think about it. What makes us different Um, from a plant? What can plants do that we can't do? Well, plants can't move, right? And we can move. (laughs) No, No, they can move. Remember? They can move. Mrs. Gren, they can move. They're living. Mrs. Gren, yes. Yeah, okay, okay, fair enough. Okay, so basically, Um, I mean... Any, what any about other answer? Animals from plants. Like, in terms of food. That's true. What's the difference? You guys have no okay. answer. Well, <laughs> well, well, plants use oh, I that light energy point. for food. We, we use uh, <laughs> food. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Plants can basically, you know, photosynthesize, which, well, we're going to talk about a bit, a bit more in detail, but use the sun's energy to as nutrition. Yeah. 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 But yeah exactly. Good in some answer. Ways, so can't we do that as well? Is that is that fair to say, or is that? No. I mean, obviously not to the same extent. We don't just you know soak the sun in to to develop. Well, in this case, plants make their own food, whereas and humans have to get food from other sources, like killing other animals or eating plants. Yeah. Ah. Okay. So that's called an autotroph when you make your own food, which is what plants do with sunlight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Photosynthesis is the trapping fixation of carbon dioxide and its subsequent reduction to carbohydrate using hydrogen and water. I don't think that's like the best um, thing, to definition. definition. But in other words, it's a way plants make their food using sunlight. Because imagine, like, you're turning light em- energy to chemical energy. It's like you're taking light and you're turning it into a vegetable or an apple or something you guys get that mm. like omg that's so cool <clears throat> no i mean essentially yeah. that's what plants do right yeah they use energy to make fruits so they're making food for themselves and us how nice <laughs> <laughs> i can feel that a star coming <laughs> <laughs> so yeah here's the um equation carbon dioxide plus water gives glucose and oxygen and the thing is 
photosynthesis is just more than that. You see that arrow in between water and glucose? Mm-hmm. That's just a mm. lot of reactions going on. And combining carbon dioxide and water, coming out with glucose and oxygen, those plus signs, that arrow sign is just a bunch of chemical reactions going on in order to okay. give photosynthesis. Hang on. So you say that it's converting light energy into chemical energy, but in the equation, there's no light energy. So where where would that go? Yeah. Light the, energy would arrow. be in the arrow. It's in there. Yeah. It's in the arrow. Yeah. In the, the presence of light energy and chlorophyll, that's yeah. usually what's above the arrow, but we don't have it here. But good question. Right. So step one, how do we photosynthesize? Well, not us, but plants, obviously. <laughs> 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 we capture light energy. What's uh, here's the question? Why is it green? Do you guys know why plants are green? Chlorophyll. That's um, a chloroplast, and it contains oh, chlorophyll. Nice. And that's practice. It's only in plants, which is what makes them very unique to our bodies. Wait. Okay. Rephrase. <laughs> 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 Chlorophyll are in chloroplasts, which are unique to only plant cells, unlike in animal cells where it's absent. Yep. Yeah. There. There you go. Okay, here's a little diagram of what a chloroplast is like. Sam, what does this remind you of? A good analogy is that you think of it as pancakes because they look like stacks of pancakes. Yeah. Mm. And then they're (laughs) stressed. Sorry. (laughs) They're surrounded by something called a stroma, which is like jelly, but you can think of that as like the syrup on the pancake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We know one say? pancake is called thylakoid and a stack is called granum. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, we got that right. Yeah. Chlorophyll. <laughs> chlorophyll. Yes. Chlorophyll. Exactly. Did you guys know that there are two types of chlorophyll? There's no, called I chlorophyll know. A and chlorophyll B. I feel there like I'm going to jump the gun and ask what the differences are. <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys like to guess what the difference between chlorophyll A and B is? Uh, what can I guess? All right. So maybe their purpose. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, a plant contains many different types of pigments. There isn't just chlorophyll. It's going to be separated into many categories. Basically, chlorophyll A looks to be yellow green, and chlorophyll B is blue green that's why you see like different shades of green in plants it's mm-hmm. dependent on oh, like, yeah. the proportion of different types of chlorophyll pigments they have okay see the cool. reason uh jay is a physics student so he understands kind of like light physics so here the reason chlorophyll a appears yellow green is that it reflects colors more on the red side of the spectrum and so it yeah. absorbs more blue violet light uh, oh. So that's what makes it different. It absorbs more blue violet light, whereas <coughs> chlorophyll B absorbs <laughs> more red light. Uh-huh. Okay. In general, all chlorophyll absorb mostly red and blue violet light. On the PowerPoint, we have a graph called the action spectrum and the absorption spectrum. What mm. it basically shows you is at what wavelength of light it absorbs most and green is usually from 520 to 560 and you can see on the graph how that's where it kind of dips i was about to ask them what what? oh (laughs) it's okay okay ask okay so (laughs) where do you think is uh green light in the red graph like which part like what wavelength do you think green light is depend based on the graph Around 500 nanometers. Yeah, because since chlorophyll appears green, that means they mostly reflect or emit green light. That means yeah. they absorb red and blue violet. So mm-hmm. that's how you can what you can see the difference between the different chlorophylls on the absorption structure. Okay. Mm-hmm. And yeah. can I ask, um, what is the significance of wavelength? What does that quite mean? Wavelength uh, is... Uh, um, Light. I think that's just more of a physics question, isn't it? Really? Yeah. You answer. Yeah. You answer. Okay. So the colors you see, right, are because each material is emitting um, some light, yeah. But each light, each light wave. Let's look at it in waves, right? So let's say light is a wave. One wave uh, of wavelength, I don't know, five hundred nanometer, is going to be green. 
And if you have a wavelength of, I don't know, 200 nanometers, that's going to be somewhere like violet. So each different color in the world, in the world, yes, is of a different wavelength. Oh, and what sort of dictates wavelength? What, what is it that, in, I guess, in the world that makes wavelength vary? What makes wavelength vary? That's yeah. just... It That's is just how it is. It is. <laughs> it yeah. is what it is. So, yeah, no, no. So, yeah, it is <laughs> really what it is, yes. Wavelength is basically yeah. how long it takes, uh, how long uh, a wave is from, like, a peak to the peak. That would be the wavelength. Yeah. So it's just, <laughs> it basically is what it is that this color <laughs> is this wavelength and this color is this yeah. wavelength. And you also have other waves, radio waves, microwaves. Um, they're also different wavelengths to uh, yeah. light waves, yeah. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Oh, carrot. Okay, Sam, pronounce it. <laughs> okay, here I go. Carotenoids. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Carotenoids. Carotenoids? Carotenoids. Carotenoids. Okay, think of carrots and humanoid Carotenoids. and like combine them together. <laughs> Humanoids. <laughs> <laughs> I spent like ten hours trying to pronounce this <laughs> the British way. <laughs> okay, so, so there's also another pigment called the carotenoids, which, along with chlorophyll, is in present in the leaves. But they mostly absorb just blue violet light. So, based on the color theory that we just learned, what do you think they appear like? Green. What? Oh no, um, no, they absorb blue violet light, so they're gonna be like orangey red, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one major like example of where carotenoids are very present are tomatoes. Their entire like skin is like full of a bunch of carotenoids and use that in oh, a yeah. lot of science experiments. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when you think carotenoids, think of tomato for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> or you can think of a carrot, which is orange. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that what are works for me? Yeah. yeah. So what are the names of all the pigments that we have learned so far? Carotenoids. Mm-hmm. I feel like I might have pronounced that wrong. Is that, is that, that's Carotenoids. Carot- Carotenoid. 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 <laughs> it's okay. 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 So, what are the three pigments, J? Three or, pigments or, that you plant is. Remember, in the presence. Okay, so in the presence of light and blank gives glucose and oxygen. Oh right. Okay. Okay. I didn't know what the question was. Sorry, yeah. okay. By pigments, you mean what are the three things we learned so far? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right, okay, that makes sense. Okay, so first of all, we learned that a photosynthesis is basically using um, carbon dioxide and water to make uh, glucose and oxygen. Yeah. And this is done using the light from the sun. Yes. Uh, and then we learned about chlorophyll, how there's two types of chlorophyll. There's yes. yellow, there's a chlorophyll A and B. Mm-hmm. One yes. is yellow green, the other one is more blue green because of the different types of wavelengths of light that they absorb. Uh, we also learned about how the inside of a chloroplast, how, um, what's, what's one pancake called again? Thylacoid. Dialogue. Oh no! <laughs> no You're no, switching the answer. I'm so sorry. Random is, random is the whole cakes. stack. <laughs> yeah. Tylacoid and the whole stack is a granum. And finally, we learned about carotenoids, which are basically what is it? Orangey red pigments. Is it pigments? Yes. Yeah. Bro, I feel so proud. Wow. Okay, so the three pigments: chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll B and carotenoids. Here's uh, another diagram, so you can this see. Is, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is another obs- um, absorption spectrum, except this time it has carotenoids here, and you can see that it basically absorbs no wavelength of light after green. So they would emit only green, red light and a bit of yellow light. Hmm. Here you can see uh, chromatography. You can do this. I believe in you. Ah. Uh. <laughs> you guys have you guys done chromatography before? Please yeah, like yeah paper chromatography. It's like yeah. one of those fun things you do in school. That was great. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I remember um, doing this in class. Actually, we took a plant. Uh, there was like a purple one, 
a green leaf, a purple leaf, and then we like crushed it, right? And then we put like sand and like ethanol, I think. Uh, a chemical. Yeah, a chemical. <laughs> did we did we do that? I think it was acetone. Or acetone, yeah. You crush it in a mortar. A mortar. You, <laughs> you might you would have learned it in GCSE chemistry if you're in the UK. Yeah. Or maybe in this takes me so, back. Yes. So it is separating let's say you have uh I don't know, a col a an ink, right? Let's say you have an ink. And that ink is some color, right? Let's say it's orange or something. Okay. So when inks are made, there's more than one constituent ink. So the the orange ink can be made of I don't know three different other uh, ink pigments, let's say. So using chromatography, you have something to write in the ink on. So have some paper, get some ink on it, and then you use a solvent. So that could be water, ethanol, or acetone as well. And then this is I'm I'm talking about it very briefly as well. So and then when you dip it the paper into the solvent, what happens is the three different pigments come out. And then you can also use this to compare with other inks. Let's say, I don't know, an orange pen and uh, a green pen, for example. See if they have any similarities. And this method is actually used a lot in uh, forensic investigations as well. I don't know, let's say something's written down. Uh, oh. So that's chromatography. But the other thing on the slide here is the RF value. So the RF value is basically a number that's used to identify the pigments. So it kind of tells you the positions um, of the each pigment on the paper. Yeah. yeah, that's paper chromatography in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. So what happened with the plant after we crushed it is that we took bit of the pigment and then we did chromatography and we tried to see what pigments um, were in the plant. And the uh, RF value corresponds to like a table that's saying like, okay, this is xanthophyll, this is chlorophyll, this is chlorophyll B, and carotene. There will always be a published set of RF values that you can use to compare it to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's always what you do at the end of the experiment. But yeah. Also, one more tip. If you're calculating RF values and it's more than one, then you've gone wrong somewhere. Uh, <laughs> you probably need to do it the other way around because the RF value is always going to be less than one. Uh, I was, the higher the RF value, the smaller the molecule, and that's going to be like higher up on the paper. Paper, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you guys remember the equation for our value? Oh, uh, yes. It's uh, the smaller distance divided by the bigger distance. So from distance yeah. traveled, yes. <laughs> by the uh, solvent or the distance traveled by the pigment. That's it. Very. Yes. That's so perfect, I, yeah. I look at it as like a percentage of how much it traveled up Ooh. the paper. Uh -huh. Ooh. Uh, this, this one's is, okay. This you can one's go. gonna be a little bit tough to explain, but I'll try my best. Since um, some people might just be listening and cannot see our PowerPoint, so. Engelman's experiment. So there's a guy named Engelman, and he did this experiment. He took a prism, and then he shone light on it, and then it showed the whole spectrum. After that, he took uh, spirogyro cells. Inside, there's spirochloroplasts. Then there's also aerotactic bacteria. Uh, basically, the spirogyra is like a whole, just one line of chloroplasts from an algae. So you just have one huge kind of string of uh, chloroplasts that you can use for experiments instead of having like clumps, if that makes sense. So it's easier for the prism light to be spread out evenly and make okay. it a fair experiment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What they're doing is that shining it on the plant, yeah, and these aerotactic bacteria are attracted to oxygen. Okay. Now, look at the picture and what do you guys think it's telling you? Look at where the oxygen um could be and look at where the okay. aerotactic bacteria are gathering the most yeah okay so the picture is basically telling us that oxygen is towards the green try one more time <laughs> <laughs> okay. so yeah, aerotact aerotactic bacteria are attracted to oxygen and if you can look at the diagram you can see that at the red part and at the blue violet part most oxygen 
are released from those areas. And so the aerotactic bacteria are attracted to those um, parts of the plant. Do you guys remember the equation from earlier? Photosynthesis produces oxygen. Yes. So yes. what it's basically saying is at the blue-violet and the red ends of the spectrum, that's where the most photosynthesis takes place. Yeah. Okay. So you could say the bacteria are going towards the chloroplasts that are, are doing the most photosynthesis. Okay, yeah, yeah. And if they're doing the most photosynthesis, that means that blue-violet and Red violet, uh, red light is specifically the best for photosynthesis. Yes. So that's exactly what this experiment shows is if you want to maximize the rate of photosynthesis, you would have to shine a red light or blue violet light on a plant. Yes. And then yeah. it's going to produce more oxygen. Mm-hmm. So it's either red or blue. They're both yes. is equal. Okay. Well, not equal, but higher than green. Yeah, yeah. higher than green. Yeah. Green yeah. is almost zero. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's some. There's some. Yeah, a little bit. Those are the stupid bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Photosynthesis. Okay, Ali, you do this one. Okay, so photosynthesis, there are two main reactions. There's light-dependent, and then there's light-independent. What do you think is the difference between these two reactions? Well, one Ooh. requires light, and one doesn't. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so... Light dependent needs light energy, while light independent light energy is not needed. Light dependent occurs in the thylakoid of the chloroplast, while light independent occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast, which is the syrup. Um, light dependent provides chemical energy for light independent stage. CO two is um, converted to carbohydrates in the light independent stage, also known as the Calvin cycle. Okay. So it's nice. all linked up in a way because you need the light dependent reactions to take place for the light independent reactions. Yes. yes. Because it produces material that you'll need later on. So yeah. overall, the light dependent uh, occurs in the pancake and the light independent occurs in the syrup. Ooh. Ooh. Here's our stack of pancakes. That's what it looks like inside. It's all <laughs> folded. So. What we said is kind of like a lie. <laughs> the pancakes are connected, and inside they also have thylakoid space. And basically, it's folded like that. If you guys know about um, the structure of uh, what's called mitochondria and how it's also folded, it's to maximize surface area yes. okay. so that you can have as much pigments on there as possible because there's chlorophyll inside and there's chlorophyll outside. It's just all over, mm-hmm. where wherever it could be. So inside the thylakoid membrane and all of that goodness is um, the pigments. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this looks a little complicated, uh, but we're going to be going over all of that today. Just to get you guys ready. Okay, remember when I said that it's all a big chain? Uh-huh. For yeah. This is where the equation comes in. Okay, you can see how the water goes in. And the carbon dioxide goes in at the Calvin cycle. Yeah. The two arrows that go in. And then out comes oxygen and glucose. So yeah. that's those are the different processes we were talking about inside the arrow. Oh. Mm. Okay. Any uh, questions? Any other questions? Do you guys know what, what ATP is? I was just about to ask you that. Yeah. yeah okay, that ATP is, is adenosine triphosphate. It's the currency of energy. Okay. So it's basically energy. Let's right. take it as like a molecule of energy or something. Mm-hmm. Um, NADP, NADPH, and ADP. Those are carriers of like electrons and stuff like that. Correct? Right. ADP is a carrier molecule that carries high energy molecules, basically. And it just drops it off where it needs to be, picks it up where it needs to go. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to learn more about it in detail once we go more in detail about the reactions. So don't worry. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the light-dependent reaction. <laughs> <laughs> the, f- the first step is light harvesting. We have nice gifs, first ones of light. <laughs> <And> <laughs> a tracker. 
Light energy is trapped using either chlorophyll or carotenoids arranged in a cluster is called an antenna complex. So here's another analogy. This is what our um, thylakoid looks like. And imagine this cone, the paper cone that you drink water out of. So that's what an antenna complex is. You drink water out of paper cones? At the water fountain, right? You guys have okay. those? Boy, I've never seen... Yeah! Really? Wait, you drink oh water out of paper cones? What? Yes. No way! You've never seen awful. that before? You haven't seen <laughs> No, we have paper cones, but we use them to eat chips. What? You're lying. What? Yeah. Water? It's, Why did you next to the water cooler? Uh, yeah. Come on, you've grown what? up in British school. Like this is the epitome of like, budget cuts, you know? You know oh, I've never seen that. Okay, no. do you approve of this analogy? Right. Okay, I approve of the analogy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just imagine so, the cone. <laughs> imagine the tip of the cone being the where the main pigments are like chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b then think mm. though about the rest of the cone as like other pigments that help um absorb light you know uh, and then it all trickles down to the tip so they get the light energy and then they transfer it to a single um area called the reaction center Ooh. so all um, this is also called the photosystem uh-huh Okay, you're going too fast. Because <laughs> uh, I think we went over it too fast. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Light energy is trapped either using either chlorophyll or carotenoids arranged in clusters called an antenna complex. Uh, we can use a cone to represent the antenna complex, and then the tip is the reaction center, and the rest is accessory pigments. You go no, yeah, the accessory <laughs> pigments. Okay, so like, there's many okay. pigments, guys. There's not just carotenoids and um, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. Those are just the main ones. And think of that as like the tip of the cone, while the rest is just filled with other pigments, which okay. are called accessory pigments that also also absorb different parts, well, parts of the spectrum. And then all mm-hmm. that light energy is passed down to the reaction center. All right, got yeah. it. So you can see how the only the dark green is the reaction center and the light green are accessory pigments. What they do is just get the photons of light and just kind of bounce it around. The main photosynthesis pigment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Photolysis. Oh. You take care of that. <laughs> so now we have our light energy that we need for photosynthesis. But how do we get the water or like split it into what we'll need for the reaction? This process is called photolysis. We also learn in chemistry, I believe. And it's basically where you split a water molecule into two hydrogen ions, two electrons, and half of an oxygen molecule. Mm -hmm. You're going to be using the hydrogen molecule later on, but the two electrons are what are important for now. Yes. And the oxygen is what's produced. So we we already have a product of photosynthesis already Mm -hmm. at the first stage. This process is also called water electrolysis, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I knew yeah. that because you did the <laughs> electro- uh, electrolysis in chem in GCSE chemistry. Yeah, so this is basically electrolysis by using water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Oh, hence photolysis. Yeah, that makes sense. So there are two antenna complexes involved: photosystem one and photosystem two. Which photosystem do you think comes first? Uh, I want to say one. I, mean, I might be, you know, I, I might be throwing a curve, and it might be two. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually two. Wow. <laughs> Stop. Photosystem two oh, comes man. first, and then photosystem one comes after. Yeah. So always <laughs> just oh. yeah. Go ahead. Oh no! no. Okay, ignore what I said. No. <laughs> okay. So. The first step of this very complicated process is the photon hits photosystem two. Yes. Think about the <laughs> this picture. This is a photosystem. Okay? Okay. So think of so that. So it's going to bounce around on the accessory pigments and then it goes and hits the reaction center. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So energy is transferred to the reaction center. Then after that reaction after it has traveled there, two electrons are excited to a higher energy level and picked up by a primary electron acceptor. So the two electrons are from 
What again? Oh, right. You want me to answer? The two yeah. electrons are from <laughs> when we split water. Yes. Uh, but what yeah, is it so called? Photolysis. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's Photolysis. good pronunciation. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the electrons are passed down an electron transport chain, each of lesser energy levels. It's kind of complicated, but not really. It's just a series of... Um, proteins unlike it travels from one protein to the next protein and then it loses energy along the way and mm-hmm. imagine like a staircase downwards and as the two electrons go downwards they're just kind of releasing energy that can be used for the next process we're going to talk about yes. okay and the energy that we harvest is basically going to be used by adp and then it combines with another phosphorus molecule to make atp yes because ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Tri mm. meaning three. Okay, so ADP turns into ATP if you add one more phosphate. Okay, to yeah. Make it three phosphate. ADP only contains two phosphates. Make it easy to understand, you can interpret the D as double and then T as triple. Yeah. So it goes from double to triple, meaning it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a good analogy about the staircase. I haven't really thought about it that way. So well, that's how a, I always think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and as they go down the staircase, okay, it's going to go to photosystem one, and then two more photons again hit the photosystem two and excite the electrons once again. And it's going to be the same process where it gets picked up by a primary acceptor and goes down the staircase again. Except this time, the energy is going to be used for NADP to combine with the hydrogen molecule. And do you guys want to... Guess where the hydrogen molecule came from again? Water. Lysis. Photolysis. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> just came back. Water lysis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So th- <laughs> they combine and they make NADPH. That's pretty simple. And it's going to use an enzyme called NADP reductase. Because reduction is basically when you add a hydrogen. And that's what mm-hmm. happens in this process. ATP and NADPH are moved to the stroma for light independent reaction. So those are the two so things we've made from the staircase, and that's basically the overall products from the light dependent, dependent reactions. And yeah. they're going to go from the pancakes to the syrups. So that's your whole picture. If you put it them. all comes oh, together. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> you can visually see how like the electrons get excited up when like the acceptor takes it, and then goes down the staircase, then go back up, then down the staircase again. Uh-huh. Yes. You're going to have so, two photosystems, both energized by photons of light. Let's see. Uh, hmm. What are the products out of this whole process? NADPH? Yes. Yeah. What and? Um, think of the two things we produced from the staircases. Mm. Look at the middle Can part. we go back a bit? No. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, look at the middle part. Yeah, it's ATP. ATP. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember mm-hmm. yeah. So it's going to yeah. be ATP and NADPH, and that's what we get out of this. Okay. That's just a clear version. So photosystem 2 makes ATP and photosystem 1 makes NADPH. Yes. Oh, gosh, this is going to be hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on to the second part. Because like now that Calvin we... Calvin cycle. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've moved the NADP and the ATP into the syrup, it's time for the light independent reactions, which is the Calvin cycle. Oh god. It looks very complicated, but trust me, it's just gonna get easier, so don't worry about it. Okay, so there's three steps. There's carbon fixation, there's reduction, and regeneration. I just re- like to remember as CRR. I don't know. Whenever I'm doing carb- Calvin cycle, I just remember the letters C R R: carbon fixation, reduction, regeneration. Mm-hmm. The first step mm-hmm. it involves getting a five carbon sugar, so just a sugar with five carbons as the back uh, as the backbone. Mm-hmm. As you can see there. Mm-hmm. It. It's it's called ribulose bis- bisphosphate, or I'm just going to call it. <laughs> It's, okay, <laughs> let me start over. <laughs> there is a five carbon sugar, which is basically a sugar molecule with only five carbon in the backbone, and it's called ribulose bisphosphate, or just RUBP, which is what I'm going to okay. be calling it. And it combines with 
carbon, a carbon dioxide molecule using Rubisco, which is an enzyme that speeds up the reaction to make a six carbon sugar. So the one mm-hmm. carbon from the carbon dioxide with the five carbon from the sugar combine make a six carbon sugar that's super unstable because it's hard to keep the bonds together. And it immediately splits into two molecules of glycerol three phosphate, also known as GP. Okay. okay. Are we all okay, on the we- same page? Do you guys have any questions at all? If you're just completely lost, tell us. Um, so I am a bit lost, I won't lie. I am a bit lost, I won't lie. Could we go back lost. just to the step before this? That's Yeah, back. yeah, the Calvin cycle. That's the bit I got a bit confused on. If you just wouldn't mind explaining that one more time. Okay, so the Calvin cycle is what takes place in the syrup, and it's basically the whole light the independent struggle. reaction. Because okay. you can see in this diagram, there's no like photons of light hitting it or nothing. Yeah, it's yeah. just a whole. I cycle. remember the diagram that we showed earlier, where Sam was like, "Okay, so this is where water comes in, and this is where oxygen comes out, and this is where mm. um, carbon dioxide comes in, and uh, glucose yeah. comes out." So we're dealing with the glucose part of it right now. The carbon oh, dioxide. Okay. Yeah. No, that makes this, sense. That makes sense. Yeah. We deal. This is, we dealt with the water. We already got oxygen. So right now we're trying to get glucose, and this is basically the process. Yeah. Okay. This is where no, that definitely makes sense. Light dependent reactions turns water into oxygen, and then light independent turns carbon dioxide into glucose. Yeah. yeah. So okay. you can kind of separate them in that way. Uh huh. But yeah. Easier. Yeah. Okay. We're still talking about the Calvin cycle, but this is the first stage of the Calvin cycle. Carbon yeah. fixation. Where mm-hmm. a five carbon sugar called ribulose bisphosphate combines with CO2 using Rubisco to make a six carbon unstable sugar. So CO2 contains carbon. So that carbon goes to the five sugar molecule, RUBP, and it makes a six carbon sugar. Understand? Yeah. 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 Okay. This splits into two molecules of GP. So six divided by two, three. Yeah. That's why it's called glycerol three phosphate. Yes. Or GP. Mm -hmm. Because it's three carbon. If you want to go back to the diagram. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely makes carbon fixation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, Wait. One thing on the slide, like on the second part. Yeah. This. This. uh, Yeah. This slide. (laughs) Right. This one. Yeah. we, we, is it is it glycerol the glycerol glycerol three phosphate or glycerol because like oh, you can oh, see it now I don't know if it's that's glycerol yeah okay, cool. okay let's pretend it was elder <laughs> yeah. Yeah. okay let's move on to the second stage of the Calvin cycle reduction, reduction. uh we take chemistry like so what's your definition of reduction okay so reduction I think is you can look at it two ways. It's either the 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 loss of oxygen or the gain of uh, hydrogen in a redox reaction. But the real definition really is uh, reduction is the gain of hydrogen. That's the proper one. So for this, I remember the two molecules that we got from the light dependent stage are NADPH and ATP. Yes. Remember? And NADPH, you know how it combined with the hydrogen? It's going to come in and bring that hydrogen to this cycle so that it can be used for reduction because it's the gain of hydrogen. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, as we discussed, NADP is basically a hydrogen carrier. Okay. So, yeah. 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 It takes that hydrogen and then it brings it to here. And that's what basically reduction is. Mm-hmm. It also uses okay. one molecule of ATP, which is an energy molecule. We have <laughs> we have energy, we have the hydrogen, and then we have GP. That all yeah. that kind of all mixes together and makes Kigal. That's not how you pronounce it. <laughs> That's how <laughs> I like to pronounce it. But it's triose phosphate or PGAL. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. It makes it more reactive so that it can be used for either regeneration or making basic biological molecules. Yeah. Ali. Huh? Explain that. <laughs> Explain Biological that. molecules is basically anything with carbon and hydrogen. If you think of like organic chemistry organic, in a way, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. There's it, lipids. Yeah. There's amino acids. 
carbohydrates. Glucose is a form of carbohydrate. The four ways that triose phosphate can be used is one to regenerate RUBP, which is the third step, or yeah. it can produce it can produce carbs because triose phosphate is three carbon, right? So you can get mm. two of these. So you have six carbons and make glucose or two triosphosphate is used to make a hexose or in amino acids. That's three carbons. And lipids are just a long chain of these carbon hydrogen molecules. That's the fatty acids. Okay, let's look okay. at the whole thing again. Go through reduction from where we see GP at the right. Okay. So the ATP is going to come in split into two molecules, and that's going to re- release the energy that we need. Uh-huh. The reduced NADP is going to come in, bring a hydrogen, and that's going to attach to the GP and make it super reactive so that you can be used to, so that you can use it to make glucose, amino acids, or lipids. Yeah. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. <laughs> reduced NADP is NADPH. It's the same. It's the same thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. Reduced NADP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then moving on to the last stage. Allie, do us the honors. Oh, gosh. <laughs> regeneration. One ATP is used to regenerate one RUBP and continue the cycle. Six turns of the cycle will produce one glucose. Let's just recap the whole thing. CO2 comes in, combines with a five-carbon sugar, makes an unstable six-carbon sugar. That six splits into two molecules called GP. Then, both molecules of glycerate 3-phosphate are phosphorylated and reduced using ATP and reduced NADP. Um, what I mean by phosphorylated, that means the phosphate is added to the GP. And what I meant by reduced using ATP, that means you're adding hydrogen to the GP. The addition of these things make GP more reactive and turn into another molecule called TP. They're essentially the same, except that TP is just more reactive than GP. Final question is, where does this TP actually go? Well, it could go in two directions. One, most of the TP is used to regenerate RUBP. RUBP is essentially the five carbon sugar that started this whole Calvin cycle. If you add carbon dioxide to that five carbon, it becomes six carbon again. So that's where our 5-carbon molecule comes from. It comes from TP. The other direction it could go is to make glucose. But that's not the only thing TP can turn into. It could also turn into polysaccharides, fatty acids, amino acids, anything that is needed for the plant to survive. Well, guys, today has been a really interesting podcast about photosynthesis. And we've had the chance to go into great depth about something that Well, personally, I didn't have that much knowledge about. So if you're interested in following more content, be sure to head to our Instagram, YouTube, and Spotify, which will all be at The Science Pod, for more science episodes. If you like our podcast, please share it to your friends. Check us out again before an exam. It will be a huge lightsaver. Thank you for tuning in. See you in the next episode.